This is the final screencast for the abdominal ultrasound workshop. In this screencast, we will discuss normal versus abnormal structures. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to describe the echogenicity of the liver relative to the right kidney. You should be able to identify posterior acoustic shadowing and posterior acoustic enhancement, which we have discussed on the previous screencasts. And you should be able to identify and describe renal stones, gallstones, and simple renal cysts. When we are assessing the echogenicity of the liver and the kidney, we look at the relative brightness of the liver compared to the kidney or their relative echogenicity. The kidney is characteristically less bright or hypoechoic compared to the liver. When the kidney becomes brighter than the liver or appears brighter than the liver on ultrasound, we describe it as being hyperechoic to the liver, and that means there is an abnormality of the renal parenchyma. That same relative echogenicity also holds true for the spleen relative to the left kidney. Notice in both of these images, the liver is brighter than the right kidney in the right upper quadrant, and the spleen is brighter than the left kidney in the left upper quadrant. Here we have an example of an abnormal or diseased kidney in a patient with chronic kidney disease. We see that the normally hypoechoic renal cortex is now hyperechoic relative to the adjacent liver. Take a moment, read this question, and decide what you think the right answer is. As we just discussed, the normal relative echogenicity of the liver and kidney is the kidney is hypoechoic to the liver. In this image, we see the kidney appears darker than the liver, and therefore this is the normal relative echogenicity of the liver to the kidney. So A, true, is the correct answer. Now let's look at the gallbladder. As we've described on previous podcasts, the gallbladder is a fluid-filled structure it rests in the gallbladder fossa between the right and left hemi liver, and it tends to show posterior acoustic enhancement. The posterior acoustic enhancement occurs because sound waves pass relatively unimpeded through the fluid within the gallbladder and therefore have a higher amplitude when they hit the soft tissue deep to the gallbladder. Also note the gallbladder wall is a single layer hyperechoic wall and the thickness of the gallbladder wall should be less than three millimeters. Now let's look at a patient with an abnormal gallbladder. This person has acute cholecystitis. We see the gallbladder as this hypoechoic fluid-filled structure, but in the neck of the gallbladder, we can identify a gallstone. The gallstone appears hyperechoic because it is a very effective reflector and there is a sharp interface between the fluid within the gallbladder and the gallstone. Deep to the gallstone, we have posterior acoustic shadowing because the sound waves cannot pass beyond the gallstone to allow for imaging of structures deep to the gallstone. Along the fluid-filled portion of the gallbladder, we can see posterior acoustic enhancement. Again, sound waves are passing relatively unimpeded through the fluid portion of the gallbladder. Therefore, structures deep to the fluid are brighter than the adjacent soft tissue. Also notice in this patient with acute cholecystitis that the gallbladder wall is thickened and somewhat irregular. It is no longer thin, uniform, and hyperechoic. Here we have multiple other examples of gallstones for your reference. In each case, the gallstones, whether single or multiple, appear as a rounded, hyperechoic focus within the fluid of the gallbladder and show posterior acoustic shadowing. 
Take a second to look at these two images. Which of the following images is showing shadowing gallstones? Now this is a tricky case. Image A shows shadowing gallstones and image B shows gas within the stomach. Notice that in image A, the gallbladder has a single layer hyperechoic wall, where in image B, there are three layers to the gastric wall. Now let's take a look at calculi within the kidney. Here we can see a longitudinal image of the left kidney. We can see the outer hypoechoic cortex and the inner hyperechoic renal sinus fat. In the middle of the fat, we see a hyperechoic structure that is causing shadowing. That is the calculus. Notice how a renal calculus has a similar appearance to the calculi we saw in the gallbladder. One difficulty with renal calculi compared to calculi in the gallbladder is that the renal sinus fat is hyperechoic and can sometimes obscure the hyperechogenicity of the renal calculus. Posterior acoustic shadowing can be a key finding to differentiate a renal calculus from just hyperechoic renal sinus fat. Another trick we can use to differentiate renal sinus fat and calculi is Doppler ultrasound. Here we see the kidney with its hypoechoic cortex. We see a calculus, or what we suspect to be a calculus, in the midst of hyperechoic renal sinus fat. When we put Doppler ultrasound onto that calculus, we see a twinkle artifact or a very bright area of aliasing that gives us high confidence that this is a renal calculus. Here is another example of a renal calculi. There's the kidney with its hypoechoic cortex, its echogenic renal sinus fat. We see a calculus in the midst of the renal sinus fat, evident by the posterior acoustic shadow. On the right-hand side, again, we see a renal calculus and we can see the posterior acoustic shadow, giving us high confidence that it's not just echogenic fat, but actually a calculus. Hydronephrosis is another common condition detected with ultrasound in the kidney. In this case, we see a normal kidney on the left with hypoechoic cortex and central echogenic fat. And on the right, we see the hypoechoic cortex but we also see separation of that renal sinus fat due to fluid filling the calyces, the infundibuli, and the renal pelvis of the right kidney. This is described as hydronephrosis and is often indicative of obstruction of the ureter or obstruction of the renal pelvis. As we follow the ureter from the right renal pelvis down the retroperitoneum of the right abdomen, we can see that the ureter is dilated throughout its course. A skilled ultrasonographer could often follow that dilated ureter all the way down to identify the cause of obstruction, in this case, a ureteral calculus. Note that the ureteral calculus is hyperechoic and has posterior acoustic shadowing. Another entity commonly encountered in the kidneys and evaluated with ultrasound is a renal cyst. In this example, we see the kidney with its hypoechoic cortex and its central echogenic fat, and along the lower pole of the right kidney, we see a renal cyst partially imaged within our field of view. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see multiple images from a CT in the same patient showing an exophytic fluid-filled structure arising from the lower pole of the right kidney. This renal cyst on ultrasound shows posterior acoustic enhancement, although this particular image makes that posterior acoustic enhancement 
somewhat difficult to identify. Let's look, let's look at another case. Here we have an image in the right upper quadrant of the right kidney. Arising from the upper pole of the right kidney, we see an anechoic round structure, which is a renal cyst. If you look deep to the renal cyst, you can see slight increased echogenicity of the soft tissue that is only deep to the cyst. That is posterior acoustic enhancement. In the right-hand side of the screen, we have a CT image from the same patient showing the correlate of the renal cyst arising from the right kidney. Here are additional examples of renal cysts. Notice that in each example, the cyst is somewhat exophytic to the kidney. It is not centered in the renal sinus fat. It is round or nearly round, and it shows posterior acoustic enhancement. Now take a minute to look at these four images and decide which of the images demonstrates a simple renal cyst. A simple renal cyst is demonstrated in image C. Image A shows a gallbladder with a shadowing gallstone and some gallbladder wall thickening. Image B shows a dilated renal pelvis with dilated infundibuli and calyces consistent with hydronephrosis. Image C shows a large round anechoic structure arising from the kidney Notice the kidney is to the left of the cyst and is evident by the hypoechoic cortex and the central echogenic fat. Image D shows a normal image with the liver, kidney, and gallbladder in view. In summary, the normal relative echogenicity of the liver to kidney is liver hyperechoic to kidney. In other words, the normal kidney is less bright than the normal liver. Gallstones and renal stones have a similar appearance. They are both hyperechoic with posterior acoustic shadowing. Sometimes it can be difficult to differentiate renal sinus fat from a renal calculus, and so shadowing is critical, and twinkle artifact using Doppler ultrasound can be helpful. Renal cysts arise from the cortex of the kidney. They should be round and anechoic and should show posterior acoustic enhancement.